Greetings and salutations, and welcome to the Onyx Tavern. Uh, today, we are going to go ahead and start the first episode here at the Onyx Tavern. Uh, this is going to be a new podcast series created by me, uh, your host, The Barkeep. And we're going to discuss anything and everything Power Rangers related. Uh, as you know, this is the 20th anniversary of Power Rangers, so we have 20 years of history to discuss, analyze, reminisce, bash, whatever you want to go ahead and do. Uh, the format here is I'm just going to go ahead and ramble on. It, this will be unscripted, and each episode will be on a specific topic. Today, as it is the first episode, I will choose the topic, which I will reveal here in just a second. Um, but what I would go, go ahead and suggest is that if you have a topic you wish me to discuss on this show, please go ahead and email uh, to me. Uh, I will go ahead and have an email address in the description section, so feel free to go ahead and do so. And definitely please leave your comments here uh, on the YouTube page, simply because I, I got to know if I'm doing a good job. Is my length too long here? Um, is there something else uh, you want me to go ahead and focus on? So again, just comment like crazy, email like crazy, cra like crazy and uh, we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and get on with the first episode. Um, today I'm not going to do anything really specific. Um, again, this is the 20th anniversary of Power Rangers. So I want to go ahead and really just talk about the anniversary itself and what we're kind of looking at um, from Megaforce. Now, Megaforce has only had about three episodes thus far. I have not watched the third episode. It's still my DVR. I still need to get to it. But, but I'm not going to talk specifically about Megaforce, more essentially of what's going on with the 20th anniversary. Um, well, well, of course, the, the first thing we know that, that's going on, again, is, is going to go ahead and be Megaforce. And specifically, the series has been designed to reflect some of... Um, well, not so much as reflect as, as an homage to the original Power Rangers series. And I can see that in a couple of things of what they're trying to do. Uh, we are back to teenagers in teenagers with attitude, uh, basically. However, um, probably no personality, <laughs> if I may say. Um, but yeah, we're definitely back to teenagers, kind of where the, the series started its roots. Um, we have homages to Ernie's Juice Bar, which has now been re replaced with Ernie's Brain Freeze. We have the giant floating head, uh, or in this case on the wall, we have the robotic assistant. We have a, a, a secret command center that nobody knows the location of. And, and I definitely see where they're going with that, and those are great nods to the past. But, but I think more specifically, when people are thinking about the 20th anniversary, it's not so much what's going on in the show itself but it is what's outside of the show. Um, as everybody's probably been seeing, and, and what you're seeing on my background here, is the 20th anniversary logo with all the Red Rangers, plus the White Ranger, of course. Um, and, you know, they've been doing some interesting things, I think, with the anniversary at this point. Um, for one, they've had all the Red Rangers gather for the Macy's Day Parade. Uh, they've had all the Red Rangers do this weird thing in New York and, and, and all that, and... Uh, a couple of things about the Red Rangers I do want to go ahead and point out is, one, they included uh, the Red Samurai Ranger, the, both the male and female versions. Um, I don't know if they did that to really kind of bolster up their numbers, to be honest, or um, to, to reflect the female demographic. I, I really don't think that that, that would, would be the case, but I, I just find it interesting that, that they do have the female um, Samurai Ranger in there, and... Just something I really didn't expect to go ahead and see. And second, they do have the Red Alien Ranger. Now, uh, I am a big proponent of the Alien Rangers. They are a power of Power Rangers history. They are significant. Um, and so far in the merchandising, there doesn't seem to be anything referencing the Alien Rangers. Um, incidentally, I would go to Lavender Rangers page on Facebook to support for Alien Ranger merchandise. I'll put a link of that in the description as well. Um, but even though there really doesn't seem to be a mention of them, I really love the fact that the Red Alien Ranger is amongst the Red Ranger masses. Uh, he is definitely in there in the uh, the wallpaper. He is definitely there um, when they're in New York and when they're doing all this publicity and all that. 
And uh, he's counted. I, I like that. I just don't understand why the Power Rangers website doesn't have him featured prominently uh, as far as picking each season because it really skips from Mighty Morphin to Zeo. Um, but, but, but enough of that, basically. So, again, we have this, this media campaign going on with all the Red Rangers, obviously doing public appearances, um, national television scale as far as the Macy's Parade. And, and it really does surprise me because there are a lot of people that I know they are just kind of like, Power Rangers have been out for 20 years? Really? And, and I have to go ahead and think, it's like, you know, Price is Right was on for, what, 40 years? I think it is kind of still on now, maybe even longer. But it's like one of those things in the cultural backgrounds, like, yeah, Power Rangers, just like how, unfortunately, Twilight is now in the cultural background, you, you know. Power Rangers has been there and always will be there, at least in my my, my mind. Um, and I know I'm kind of going off a little bit right here, but again, this is my first episode, so uh, if I am rambling too much, you can go into the comments. Um... But what is kind of interesting about the 20th anniversary that, that I'm really kind of looking forward to uh, is the merchandising, no doubt. Unfortunately, my city doesn't have a Toys R Us, so I'm probably going to have to drive a few hours to get the Legacy Morpher when that comes out. Um, definitely the original Megazord. Um, there shouldn't be two versions of it. I think one that's just a, a solid figure uh, that's posable and one that actually is the transforming Tyrannosaurus, Mastodon, Triceratops, and so forth. Definitely got to get me uh, some of those. But what I'm really kind of interested in seeing is both Power Rangers Monopoly and Power Rangers Trivial Pursuit. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, I can't wait for those. Uh, Monopoly, hey, Monopoly is Monopoly. And they've got, done some good jobs. It's Yeah, it's kind of a gimmick. You're buying the same game. It just looks different. I mean, I, I got Star Wars Trilogy Monopoly. I got Lord of the Rings Monopoly. And... I'm going to get Power Rangers Monopoly. There's no doubt with that. Um, and I will point out, I did vote for the Juice Bar Cup as opposed to the Goldar figure or the Red Ranger boots or, or my Morphin boots since there's no color. Um, yeah, and, and of course Goldar got picked for that. But I'm going to go ahead and say, if we're talking about the 20th anniversary of Power Rangers and, and, and paying respects to it, the juice bar is uniquely American. It does not appear in the Japanese series at all. That logo was specifically created for the show. And I think that that is definitely something that should be in the game. Because I wouldn't necessarily call it iconic for everybody. But for the fans, we see that sign. And we know it, that, that it's Power Rangers. And there is no link to the Sentai. And a lot of times I do think Power Rangers needs to stand on its own like that. So having the Juice Bar Cup just kind of made sense to me. It's like, that is Power Rangers, that is the history. And really the first scene that we have that's not read or anything takes place in the Juice Bar from Day of the Dumpster. Um, they didn't go that route. Uh, I'm really interested to see what the other five pieces look like, or seven, I, I forget how many pieces. I don't know if they're doing six or eight pieces. I'll look that up. But um, in any case... Yeah, really excited for that, to see what the properties look like, what the cards say as far as go to jail, you know, the, whatever their equivalent of you won a beauty contest and all that is. So uh, definitely look forward to, to seeing that game. I think the release on that, as well as the Trivial Pursuit, is going to be the summer. Um, but yeah, de definitely interested in that part of it. Uh, Trivial Pursuit, wow, um, 20 years of Power Rangers questions. Now, a couple of interesting aspects of this game is, one, when I get it, I have no idea who I'm going to play this game with. Um, I am the only Power Ranger fan that I know, and if I know anybody who isn't interested in Power Rangers, uh, they are on the internet somewhere. So it's going to be very difficult for me to find an opponent for this game. Uh, I do have a Lord of the Rings Trivial Pursuit game that I bought at a yard sale, and I had for probably eight months before I ended up playing somebody on it. And I don't mean to toot my own horn, but, but I did win. Um, and it's that rule of, if you get it right, you keep going. Which is the same in Star Trek Seen It. Another game I can't find anybody to play with, which I inevitably end up winning. So I love the idea that the game is coming out. Not quite sure uh, how I'm going to end up playing that game. But nevertheless, um, 
I am interested in what these questions are. Um, so for those of you who don't know, they ask the Power Force, which is supposed to be the collection of the top 10, I think, biggest Power Ranger nerds on the internet. Unfortunately, I wasn't chosen, but, but that's another story. I'll talk about that later, I guess. Um, and they were asked to submit questions for uh, the game. Now, I, I know a lot of the Power Ranger uh, Force members or Power Force members uh, through their websites and all that. And I am really interested in what kind of questions are going to be on there. Um, because I almost see that they have to get Power Ranger fans to do this. Because we're talking about 20, se 20 seasons, two movies, all this behind the scenes stuff. And the fans are the ones who are really going to go ahead and know that. Um, and, and just as a personal thing, you know, I'd really like to know what Linkara has out there. He's been doing that History of Power Rangers series, which is awesome. And I'm sure that by watching every single episode, and, and he's taking notes on these things, um, that he is finding obscure references, which can make great, great questions. Um, frankly, I can think of some myself, and I really hope they're in the game. And if not, maybe when they come out with the like 25th anniversary edition or 30th anniversary edition, maybe I can submit those one day. Who knows? But, um, yeah, so I like that the fans are actually part of this uh, 20th anniversary in some fashion as far as we get the votes on things. Uh, we have fans submitting questions and all that, so, so it's really good. Um, and, and really, that seems to be the limit of where the 20th anniversary is at this point, 2013 being, being the case. What bothers me, and here's a number of things that, that does kind of bother me about this. Um, one, back to Power Rangers Megaforce, as it stands, it, it does not seem like it is a series that is connected to the roots of Power Rangers as of now, and I'm talking about, I've only seen the second episode, I haven't even seen the third episode, but I kind of get the feeling that that might not be the case. Granted, in the very first sequence of that show, we see the legendary war from the Sentai footage. Um, so, Megaforce is going to go into two seasons, at least what we're told, Super Megaforce, horrible title. Um, and it seems like that's where the exploration and the Legacy War is going to fit into this. Which I find odd. They're going to go ahead and do this whole thing in the second half as opposed to 2013, the actual 20th anniversary season and whatnot. Um, but, but it is just on that we start that first episode with that, and so far it's not even mentioned. And... As far as anniversaries are concerned, it, it does seem kind of odd they're going to go ahead and wait till the year after the anniversary to kind of really do that. Um, if I'm correct, and I, and I could be wrong, but, but as I understand it, Ghost Sager is going to be this season, next season is going to be tied in somehow with Go Kiger, and that's where we're going to go ahead and get this the, 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 the uh, legendary war. We might have the transformation thing. It's all a mess. I, I'm not quite sure how that's going to go ahead and go. But I want to bring up something of significance. Um, I'm also a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan. And I was into Turtles long before the Power Rangers, no doubt. Um, and a few years ago, I think it was 2009, they came out with Turtles Forever. Um, just to give a little background, Turtles Forever was the 25th anniversary special for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles where it was essentially a crossover between the 1987 series and the 2003 animated series. Now, for all the flaws and problems that that had, something that, that stuck with me from another internet reviewer, uh, Captain Logan of Geekvolution, did on his Superhero Rewind, uh, where he talked about that the essence of, of this special, the power of the, excuse me, Turtles Forever special, is that it's supposed to show where the franchise has been, where it is now, and how it got there, and how it is a celebration. What bothers me thus far about what they're doing with the Power Rangers 20th anniversary is that it shows where we are now. It shows where we've been, but it's not showing that progression of where we got to. 
And yes, again, this is only the second, third episode into the season, but if you showed any six-year-old, I'm going to go with six because that's how old I was when I first watched it, they're going to see this Power Rangers, and if you show them the, 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 the first episode, Day of the Dumpster, it's really disjointed from each other. Um, in the sense that, yeah, we, we, we can see different things about it. We, we can see, you know, where it started out, where it is now. But, but I want to kind of see that, that progression, um, in a sense. It, it would seem to me that what the producers need to be looking at is that they need to respect their audience. And thus far, it seems that they have done that, at least the merchandising aspect and it in the um the advertisement aspect again with the whole 20th anniversary thing megaforce i think at some point whether it's going to be this season's finale or going into the second season 2014 uh needs to go ahead and address the progression of the series and how they do that i'm not quite sure um they could go the go kiger route and show the previous teams, have cameos, show the significance of it. Um, another rouse they could do a crossover with the original Rangers, minus uh, Trini, of course. Um, but you know, what, I, what I'd like to go ahead and see is some sort of reverence for the past, some sort of acknowledgement of their existence, and not in a superficial way. I think the problem that Go Kiger got into that, I, that I've seen is that they will mention a series, state a fact about it, and then kind of move on in a few in instances without really understanding those previous characters and what they fought for. And specifically what I'm thinking of is further traffic safety, I believe. I believe it was the... Oh, I want to say the 15th episode where they meet the, the car ranger, um, the, the red racer and all that. Um, they just kind of play along with him just so they could get the, the unlocking of the, the car ranger powers, which I think they pretty much fail at the end. They really don't get anything. As Navi said, not all the powers are useful. But they didn't understand the essence of what car ranger was. Uh, how it was a parody, how it was poking fun at itself and it's at the formula. The episode itself does a great job of that. I was I was really laughing at that. But the characters themselves don't understand that. And I and I wonder about the fans who, who watch it, who never watched Car Ranger, who never understood what Car Ranger was, um, understand that uh, as well. And, and that's kind of my fear for Power Rangers. They're just going to go ahead and mention these se these past seasons. They're going to have the costumes or something, and they're not going to go ahead and make it significant. They're not going to treat it with the respect that it deserves. Now, if Disney still owned it, I, I would be really concerned. I, I really would, as, as evident of Once a Ranger, of course. Um, it needs to be more... This anniversary... And I know I'm getting a little bit out of topic, but this anniversary needs to be about how the Power Rangers got to where they are today, what is their significance in society and culture, I think, and how that really kind of relates uh, to where they are now. Now, personally, I think the Power Rangers has almost taken a nosedive as far as quality of programming, and I'm not going to get too, too much into that at the moment, but... There de again, there just needs to be something there where they respect the teams of the past and say, yeah, we couldn't have done this without you guys here first. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of where I am on, on the 20th anniversary. I, I definitely want to go ahead and see something um, that I haven't seen before. I want to see... I want this show to go ahead and take a chance with 20th anniversary. I mean, it's, been, it's been out for 20 years. It has to do something that we have yet to see before and not do something that they're copying from the Sentai source. All in all, where we are now, I think it's just the tip of the iceberg. I think we're going to get to where things are going to be much better than they are now. The quality is going to go ahead and go up. 
and I'm not going to call this the second coming of the Power Rangers, where it's, it, you know, it has heyday between 93 and 94, and in the, in the 95. I don't think it's going to be like that again, but it definitely needs to get into the public consciousness more. Um, whether that be more advertisements on television, uh, showing the older shows in syndication, uh, or even really doing uh, more advertisement to to the general public. Um, so we just got to kind of see where, where that's going to go ahead and take us. In any case, um, 20th anniversary, it's, it's going to be good. We, we just got to see what's going to go ahead and become of it. Uh, so I think I'll go ahead and wrap that up for today. I know I'm kind of rambling. I, I apologize. I didn't have a specific topic that I wanted to go ahead and get into today. I uh, just want to kind of try this out and see what, what I had to say and what people think of what I have to say. So again, please go ahead and leave your comments uh, in the comments section. Uh, if you have a specific topic you would like me to go ahead and talk about, please email me. I will read every email that is sent, and I will do my, my darn best to go ahead and reply to everything uh, that is sent to me. And I will get the next episode up here shortly. I don't know how long that's going to be, but let's go ahead and find a concrete topic that, that I can say a little bit more about and I don't ramble uh, as on so much. So, thank you. Goodbye. The tavern is now closed.